everybody, it's Carla with Cobweb Corner and welcome to floss tube number 15. Um, we're up to 270, I don't know, 78 subscribers and my goal for June is to reach 300. So we are doing really well. If you can, share uh, Cobweb Corner's channel and uh, help me make my goal. So 300 by the end of June would be awesome. I hope you find something that you like in the video. If you're returning, thank you. If you're new to the um, to Cabo Corners channel, then I hope you'll consider subscribing. And after you subscribe, hit the little bell, and that way, way you'll be notified whenever we have a new video uploaded. So anyway, um, lots to talk about today. We had a very, very busy week. Um, personally, things I did, um, last Friday, I took my mom to a low vision clinic. She has macular degeneration and has a hard time seeing quite, quite a hard time and uh, she's going to be uh, 85 in a week and a half or so maybe about a week and we were really hoping we went to the University of Iowa Hospitals uh, low vision clinic and we were really hoping that they would have some tools or aids or ideas to help her um, manage around the house and hopefully read a little bit better and we were pretty disappointed. They did an eye exam and checked her prescription and they told her that really no matter how they changed the prescription, it wasn't going to help much with improving her eyesight because her macular de degeneration is so bad. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, they, what, what ended up happening was basically the doctor said, learn how to use your iPad or an iPhone. And my mom does have an iPad. I bought her one a few years ago and she uses it to play um, games and stuff. But I tried to work with her on the accessibility features of the iPad before and it was pretty frustrating for both of us. And I told the doctor that I said, you know, we tried this before and it, it really didn't go very well. And we were hoping to have something more, you know, something else that wasn't technical and that just didn't happen so that was a little frustrating but I brought all the information home with me and I'm going to keep researching and maybe try to teach my mom uh, one or two things at a time on her iPad and first thing that we're trying is to get her to use the uh, Siri voice activation more and uh, see if that works for her so we'll see we'll see how it goes but she was disappointed which made me sad and and stuff but we gave it a try and we're going to keep trying so um, what else happened this week? I went for a bike ride with my husband, uh, two days. We have had just beautiful weather and, um, oh, hello, fresh came again. I've got two meals, uh, to show you. Last week we did, I, don't, I can't remember the name of the meal, but it was like this taste, tasting plate and it was Korean, I think. And I made homemade pork wontons and I'm like, Wow. And I needed a little help from my husband with the timing and stuff, but oh my God, they were good. And then tonight, I made steelhead trout with risotto. Oh my gosh, it was so good. So um, actually, I should tell you that I'm a little frustrated because I spent just over three hours this afternoon. It's Thursday, June 13th, and it's about, um, I don't know, 6.30 at night. But I spent just over three hours today recording my floss tube video, and then I deleted it. <laughs> I was like, and I permanently deleted it. So this is like, um, we're doing this all over again, but you know, that's life that happens. So, um, but anyway, my, yeah, these meals were really, really good. Um, I can't think of anything else that happened this coming weekend is father's day. And my dad is going to be 87 in July. And we're going to celebrate here. I'm so fortunate to still be able to have my mom and dad here for holidays and, and Mother's and Father's Days. Um, but my husband has a pellet grill and he's going to make um, smoked ribs. And they are so good. He makes the best smoked ribs. So we're going to have smoked ribs 
and sweet corn and party potatoes, which is a hash brown casserole type of thing. And then I'm gonna make an angel food cake with that fluffy white frosting and fresh strawberries. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to, to that. Um, so before I get into stitchy news, I want, I am so excited to announce the launch of a new group called Stitch and Move. So last Saturday I was riding a bike with my husband. It was just gorgeous out. And I'm sitting there on my bike thinking, I wish I could stitch and bike at the same time. And I kind of laughed about it, but it kept, I kept having this nagging thing in the back of my head. And, and I thought, you know, stitchers, they just, we, we sit a lot and some, you know, we sometimes stitch for hours at a time. And then if you have an office job, uh, we spend a lot of time sitting. So I started doing some research and I found out that they're actually calling sitting the new smoking. And there are a number of health risks involved with sitting for extended periods of time. So I formed the group Stitch and Move. And the charter of the group is a community of stitchers encouraging each other to stitch and move more. And that's pretty much exactly what it is, is uh, you come into the group, we want you to have a goal, but you don't have to share your goal. And the um, it can be an extra, uh, you know, a true, true exercise goal, but it could just be as simple as for every hour I stitch, I'll get up and walk around or stand for 15 minutes. And that's really all it is, is we want you to stop sitting for more than an hour of time. And so the group, you can share your stitching and you can share your um, goal achievement for the day. And if you already are very, very active, but you're having hard time stitching, you can make that your goal too. So let's say you really enjoy stitching, but you just don't uh, take the time to do it like you like you would like you would like to. You can say my goal is that I'm going to get in at least an hour of stitching a week, you know, and um, and be active. So there's a lot more information on our group. And it's a Facebook group that you need to apply to join. Just answer three little questions. And we're going to officially launch Saturday, June 15th. I'm pretty excited to let everybody know that Needlework Retail Magazine, um, I contacted them last, uh, just a couple days ago and they got right back to me and they said, this is an excellent idea. And they're going to put a little blurb about Stitch and Move in their next magazine, which has already gone to print. So at least that's what they told me. We'll see if it actually comes to fruition. Uh, I am just really, really excited. I've been thinking a long time about how Cobweb Corner could give back to the stitching community. And I think that this is going to be really good. I think we can encourage each other to stand up, um, stitching retreats, things like that, uh, not just sit there but to get up and move. And I'll be talking a lot about the health benefits of standing versus sitting and things like that. So I hope you'll join us. And in celebration of the launch, we're having a sale on Cobweb Corner Cross Stitch. Um, if you use code MOVE19, M-O-V-E-19, uh, you get 15% off your entire purchase in on everything, sale items, floss, everything. And that sale ends Sunday night, June 16th at midnight central time. So uh, take advantage of that if you want, but also come and find us on Facebook. I'll have a link below and I hope you'll join us. And if you're available, join. I think I'm going to try to have a live video for the launch on Saturday. And occasionally there'll be prizes. It's completely sponsored by Cobb of Corner. And uh, we're going to do as much as we can to encourage everybody to encourage each other. So I am just really, really, really excited about that. Um, let's see. Stitchy news. I didn't have hardly any personal stitching news this week. I bought, um, I had one haul. I bought, I was watching um, Michelle on, what is it? Michelle on Bendy Stitchy. And she reviewed The Floss Inn. And I just was really intrigued by it. So I went ahead and used her code for a discount. And I'm going to put a link to Michelle's 
video down below and you can watch her review. Eventually, when I after I've used this a while, I'll have a review of my own. But if you go and watch Michelle's, um, her, all of her videos are awesome if you're not already watching her. And um, you can watch that video to get the code and see the review for this. But what it is, is a floss organizer. And I bought the small one. And isn't this material gorgeous? I just love it. But I bought the small one and it holds 10 um, different colors of floss. And each, it also comes with these bobbins and basically the idea is you wrap the bobbins in a way that one six just a single six strand piece of thread comes through the hole in each organizing pocket and then you can gently pull on the on the floss that you want and it will un unwind on the spool and you don't have to keep unwinding and uh getting your thread and then it just it's just all wound in a different way and makes it much much easier supposedly so i'm really anxious to to try it and you can fold it like this and you can also roll it up and use the little uh thing here so super compact and the name of the company is The Floss In. But again, I'm going to have you go to Michelle's uh, Bendy Stitchy um, review video. And you can see everything about it. But that was my haul for the week. And then stitching wise, I only got like an hour of stitching in this whole week. I have been so busy with Stitch and Move. I thought of the idea on Saturday and I have just been go 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 i've been trying to contact some other floss tubers and i've been working with the needlework retailer and um trying to get the word out i put out a couple videos and stuff so i'm really just really excited but anyway i did get about an hour in on girl sat on dragon reading a book and i have pretty much a page finish so that's good um this is going to be her hair her face this is obviously her knees and she's reading the book and then i finished this part of the dragon's tail so i really hope to get more more work done on that but we'll see so that's really it for my um my uh personal stitching news it isn't much i'm so sorry but uh i'm hoping to have more i'm just i'm just really really excited about the stitch and move thing i know i've said that a few times already um but that's taken up most of my time so on to Cup of Corner news. Last video I had, so I'm trying to do a segment on owning or running a business. And last week I had a customer service thing. So I had a customer who was, uh, who thought that I shipped her the wrong item. And before, without contacting me, sent the item back and pretty much demanded a refund and that shipping be refunded and everything. So I asked you, without telling you what I did, I asked everybody what they would do. And I got quite a few comments. So um, it says, uh, first of all, from Susan, the customer shop question. I would send a refund for chart and mail costs with a note saying, Cobweb Corner is sorry for your inconvenience. Uh, Jean said, it's unfortunate she didn't contact you when you, uh, when she received the wrong item. I believe you should refund her money with a note saying you're sorry for any inconvenience. I was always told the customer is always right, even if they're wrong. Um, this one says, you've been no more than nice to me with my mistakes in the past, and I'm sure you'll treat this generously. Um, Jennifer said, customer service can be fun, and I'm sure you'll find the best approach. And Desiree says, uh, as far as the customer, when she gives you the only option that will make her happy, then that is what I would do. If she were to simply let you know it was the wrong item, then you can offer the free exchange of postage plus keeping the other item. But by demanding, it really limits you as a shop owner. By being gracious, it allows you to be gracious also without any risks to your business. So thank you everybody for the comments. and. I didn't state in the last video what I did, and um, I, of course I did refund her money. The order was only like $10, and I did send her a note and said, well, I think we actually did send you the right item, um, but I will go ahead this once and uh, refund your item with shipping, refund your cost with shipping. 
what I didn't say in the last video is that we do have a refund policy that's very clearly stated on our site that you need to contact us first before returning anything. And she didn't do that, but that's okay. You know, it was like, it's not a big deal. And hopefully she'll come back to Cabo Corner. So yes, I did. I refunded the money completely, which is what most people would do. And um, had it been, you know, a $150 order, that might have been a little bit more questions and answers, but um, probably would have done the same thing. So uh, $10 is certainly not worth an unhappy customer. So I agree with everybody in all the comments and thank you. Um, today's little business thing is the cost of DMC floss. Why is it vary so much? So just your standard DMC six strand floss. You can see it anywhere from, I don't know, maybe 52 cents to um, 89 cents. And the reason is the retail cost, the actual suggested retail cost of DMC floss is 89 cents and that's put out by DMC. But even DMC, if you go to their site and you want to buy floss, it's 79 cents, um, 79 cents each. So a lot of the big stores like Hobby Lobby and uh, Michaels and those will have DMC be one of their loss leaders. So you'll get an ad and you'll say DMC 52 cents a skein or something like that. And they're not making a lot of money. And the reason they're not making a lot of money is because the retailer pays half of the suggested retail price. So when I buy floss, I pay 45 cents each. So then if I turn around and sell it for 55 cents, I'm only making 10 skein or 10 cents per skein. So just to give you an idea, if I sold a hundred skeins on an order, I would make $10 of profit. And um, I charge 55 cents at Cobweb Corner. And I also consider that a loss leader because it's a lot of time to go pull an order and stuff. But you know, you need to have your DMC floss and people can get it cheaper anywhere. It's kind of like a gas war thing. Um, uh, you know, a little bit like, well, they're selling it for 56 cents, so I better sell it for 55. And the big box stores um, definitely use it as a loss leader to get people in the store because once you go into Hobby Lobby, you're not going to buy just your floss. So you're going to get an ad that says, you know, our floss is uh, super cheap this week. And you can say, wow, I need to go stock up on my floss. And then you're probably going to buy something else. So um, the, if you go to your LNS or anywhere and you see it for 89 cents a skein or 79 cents a skein, it's not that they're trying to um, take advantage of you or anything. That's actually the suggested retail price. So um, they're they're uh, just trying to do what they do on everything else. You know, we usually, retailers usually get things at 50% off, not always. Sometimes we pay a little bit more than 50%. And then we have to decide what to charge. So you don't you don't necessarily get that extra fifty percent back as um, as your profit or your your extra. So anyway, that's why DMC floss can vary so much. You just don't see it with Weeks Dye Works and Gentle Art Thread. Um, those are always two dollars and fifty cents. And uh, um, but with DMC, you can see quite a bit quite a bit of variety. So. That's the business lesson for today. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, okay, what else? Last video, I talked about something new we're doing and that was the auction sales on Facebook. And these are not charity auctions, they're just uh, sales by Cobweb Corner offering items at a starting bid of a very low price, or yeah, pretty low price on most of them and then letting customers bid on the items they might be interested in. And our first one, we listed seven items and five of them sold and they, they did really well. It was a lot of fun to watch. It went from, that one went from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Central Time. And we had bit people bidding right at 9 a.m. and we had people bidding up till 9 p.m and it worked really well. So I decided to do it again this day and I had our second auction um, yesterday, Wednesday. And this time I created a new Facebook group and I'll put a link to the group below. But um, there was just too much uh, confusion. There was too many posts and photos and, 
and people bidding and the people who weren't interested on our regular Facebook page, you know, it kind of got in the way and, and um, was confusing. So I made a separate group and we already have, I don't know, I think like 58 members and those people participated in the auction sale yesterday. We had oh, 10 cross stitch kits. Well, we had nine cross stitch kits, some cross stitch placemats, and then I also had one of my necklace and earring sets that I made. And everything sold except the placemats. And again, we had really good participation. Some of the items only got one bid, but um, it was a lot of fun again. Everybody, you know, paid right on time. So there's there's just a few rules, uh, bidding an increment of a dollar, you have to pay within 24 hours, that type of thing. But it's a lot of fun. And if you think that, um, there might be something that you're interested in and that you'd like to participate, then you can join the group. And I'll put a link below. Um, I'm gonna, right now I have a big box of cross stitch kits that I purchased from my friend who is um, reducing her stash. And I have a lot of kits that I don't normally carry kits. Once those are gone, then I'll start putting together things out of my shop, maybe some older inventory or I'll start bundling things and we'll try to keep having very regular auctions. So that was a lot of fun. So I had two new face group, face group, uh, Facebook groups, Stitch and Move and then the, the auction site. So very, very busy business week for me um, and a lot of fun. It was just, uh, it's, it's a lot of preparation and it's a lot of work, but um, both things I think are gonna be a lot of fun for the customers and a lot of fun for me. So, um, so there was that. Other than that, I did all the standard things. Um, I got two large wholesale orders in, and one from Hoffman Distributors and one from um, Wichelt. And I have only entered a small amount of the inventory, but a lot of the inventory was uh, Stony Creek that was out of set, out of stock. Not a lot. There was just a few of those. And then I'm continuing to increase our inventory for Plum Creek samplers. And I'm gonna show you some of those. And then I also have a new designer, new to me and new to the shop, um, that I've started stocking also. So what I'm gonna show you right now is the new inventory that we got in, that I've entered so far. And there are a, there's a lot more that I haven't gotten to yet. And these are available on our website already. So um, a restock item is Plum Street Samplers The Flood and I talked about this in my last video and this sold out immediately. So there's a couple of more of those back in stock. And the other one that sold out immediately was Paradise Lost. And isn't that an amazing representation of Garden of Eden? I just, there's so much detail in there. I just really like this chart and that sold out right away. So I. I think I only have one of those left now. I've already sold one. Another one that sold out by Plum Street is Betsy's House. Look at all the American flags. And uh, so I restocked that also. Then um, the new designer that we got in that I'm trying out is Lindy Stitches. And I'm going to show you some of her design or their designs. The first one is called the Peacock Keeper. And it says, a little nonsense now and then is relished by the wisest men. And she talks on her chart about the gentleman in the center. I, at first I thought he was Abraham Lincoln, but he's not. And he's just a man that she says is willing to have a little silliness in his life. And he has a peacock farm. So you have all the peacocks. And uh, that chart is 145 by 95. And another one by Lindy Stitches is called Stars Bright. And it says, we would be together and have our books and at night be warm in our bed together with the windows open and the stars bright. And that's this chart. Isn't that a neat saying? It's kind of romantic. In bed with your books and the windows open. And that chart is 181 by 161. Another one by Lindy Stitches is count your many blessings, name them one by one. And I like this because we have a lot of charts that say count your many blessings or count your blessings. And this one adds that extra name them one by one. 
something like that. And that is 121 by 75. And then this one's really funny. It's called In Another City. And it says, happiness is having a large, loving, close-knit family in another city. So it's got this whimsical cityscape with the blue hearts and the sun. And basically, I love my family as long as they're not in the same city as me. <laughs> then we've got bloom where you're planted. And if you look closely, there's an odd man out there. Second, uh, quote, skunk to the end is actually a cat. Reminds me of Pepe Le Pew, if you remember Pepe Le Pew. And then this one I really like. It's called I Forget the Rest. And it says, we were together. I forget the rest. And it's got these two owls with really cool pattern on them. And isn't that romantic? We were together. I forgot the I forget the rest. And I think this would be so good for a, a wedding or an anniversary or even um, the loss of a loved one. I think it would just be really neat. And I love the owls. So I don't know if that's it for Lindy Stitches. Then I um, only entered a couple, but I got, and I have more to enter yet, but I got a couple of hands-on designs. The first one is the Bat Bomb, which is very popular from the Scary Apothecary series. And then the second one is called Where Liberty Dwells. And it's a short drum and a small needle uh, pillow. And with the chart, you get the velveteen. Now the, they give you enough velveteen to do one of the two projects. So if you wanna do them both, you have to get more velveteen, but that comes with it. It's included in the price and it will allow you to do one of the two projects. Then new charts by Plum Street Samplers. I just love Plum Street Samplers. Um, this is one that I think every stitcher should have. Count twice, stitch once whether it's a Plum Street sampler one or, or any, it's, but I'm thinking about stitching that and putting it in my studio. Um, then we've got from the Jack's Sweet Shop, we have the birthday tart with the pumpkin in the middle. And this one says, um, it's called Miss Bingsley's Library. I shall be miserable if I have not an excellent library. And it's got either the librarian or a woman up on the roof of this house standing on a stack of books. And that's a British flag in the potted flowers. Then we have in friendship. How much to be prized and esteemed is a friend on whom we may always with safety depend. I really like this. Everybody has that one or two friends that they know they can always count on. That's really, and that one is 158 by 158. Then last week I had Betsy's house, which um, I showed you that sold out right away. So I bought Betsy's autumn and this has the large house with Betsy in the front by the United States flag with a rake. And then it's got the autumn leaves and the sunflowers and the pumpkins. And that one's 184 by 130. And then the bounty sampler, I really like this too. This would be so nice for Thanksgiving. If you see down, there's two pilgrims down below and then they have this beautiful large tree with um, autumn leaves and there's one acorn in there. And then they've got a turkey and corn and then I'm not sure, I think I think these are apples, but I'm not really sure. And um, it says, be ye thankful and good. I think that's what it says. It's really small and I don't have my reading glasses on, sorry. But I think that would be a great autumn Thanksgiving chart. And then, oh, also back in stock is jeans and weenies. So cute. This sold out right away and there's a number of the um, weenie designs by Plum Street. We have Halloweenies and oh, I think there's one other one I can't remember. So that's it for new inventory so far. I have like I said I've got probably two boxes that I need to enter yet 
and most of them are charts that have never been listed on Cobweb Corner before. So if you've been with us for a while, one of the things I do in every video is also show you because Cobweb Corner sells used and new and we specialize in um, some of the older items that you may not have seen before. So we buy a lot of our stock from stores that have gone out of business and from individual collections, which is where I got the kits for the um, auctions that we're having. So I'm going to show you, so every every week I try to, this is Bo, this is my kitty Bo Bordeaux, and she likes to join me. Um, so every week I try to show um, either some older charts in general or a specific designer or publisher. And today I'm going to show you uh, Calico Crossroads, and I don't, I believe all of these charts are from the late 1990s to early 2000s. So you're going to recognize right away the Cats by Kelly. And this is Meow, um, Meowy Showers, the April design. And they're based on the artwork of Kathleen Kelly, Cats by Kelly. Then we have three anticipation stockings. This one's anticipation one, the trees. So there's um, Christmas trees in the stocking with a brick background. Oh, got a number of those. And then there's anticipation two snowflakes. So the same kind of thing with snowflakes in the back, uh, in the stocking. And then I think there's a third one. Yep. The third one is called anticipation three sampler. So this is a stocking and then it has like a band sampler look to it. So those three in the series. Then we have a whole series of, they're called, oh, Thauma, Thaumatrope or Thaumatrope. It's a spinning optical illusion paper toy by Linda Connors. This is what it looks like. So what you get is cardstock, two pieces of perforated paper and a string. And what you do is you stitch part of the design. So in this one, this one's called um, Blossoms. You stitch the vase and the flowers, one on each piece of perforated paper, and you glue them to opposite sides of the cardstock. And then you add a string and you wind up the string and you spin it. And when you spin it, you'll have the optical illusion of seeing the full design. So I think those are so cool. And we've had these in our shop for quite a while. And I think they would be so fun to do with kids. So there's that one and then there's apples. So you have the tree and then you have the leaves and the apples on the tree. And there's a couple more that'll come up here in the list. Then we have Chicky Bobble, so cute. And Elegant Iris. I think this one's really, really nice and it's a super quick stitch. Very, very simple stitch. And I think it's got kind of that stained glass look. Faxinating. Kitty with a fax machine, execucats. That so reminds me of Bordeaux. Um, here's another one of the spinning toys. This one's a fish in a fish bowl. So you you do the fish on one piece and the bowl on the other, and you spin it, and he'll be inside the fish bowl. And hats and cats. I don't know if people still do red hats or not. And another one of the spinning toys for Halloween, you do the pumpkin and then you do the pumpkin's face. And when you spin, you have a jack-o'-lantern. That's really cool. And kismet face, <laughs> sorry, kismet fate. Completely different style. Another spinning toy called Melody. You do the bird and you do the bird cage. So you would stitch these up in no time and then make a little toy. It would be so neat. This one says, Merry Stitching to Thee. Merry Stitching to Thee. Isn't that pretty? Kind of a more traditional stocking. Merry Stitching to Thee. And then we've got Plenty, the Cornucopia. <laughs> I really like this one. Fantastic View, the kitty up on the fan. And these are super quick stitches too. This one's called Lighten Up. Don't take life too seriously. It isn't permanent. Super cute and easy quick stitch. Rise and Shine. Does anybody else have a cat who's an alarm clock? Seasons of the Heart. 
and this has different specialty stitches in each block and it says um, no matter the seasons my heart belongs to you so isn't that nice and this one I really like um, it's called uh, spring bell pull it's got the word spring and then down the very last letter G has this uh, purple pansy in it and I really like it it's got um, a number of specialty stitches but I don't know if I would do the word in a different color or the fabric a different color but I would I think I'd make it pop a little bit more but um, try to see what kind of stitches it uses satin stitch double zigzag Algerian eyelet um, and cross stitch so it's really pretty got a few of those and then I really like this one too summer grace this is a small one um, can't see the stitch count but I love that light green fabric and then the way the sheep sits behind the fence and it just says summer that one's got a date on it 2001 so this starts from 2001 and then one of my favorites this is called tre mariposa it uh, means three butterflies i love this chart and we have had this in stock for quite a while and it's never been sold and i'm like i i don't know if i have weird taste or what but i think that's just gorgeous it is a lot of um kind of black work work instead of cross stitch but I love the background and there's a, a tiny bit of color in each butterfly. I just think it's gorgeous. And you could, you could stitch them together like that or you could stitch one of them and use that in a project. And we have a welcome banner with the uh, hospitality pineapple and another Valentine string toy. And last is Yule, which is the Christmas tree. You stitch just the tree and then you do the ornaments and spin them together to have a decorated tree. So that's our featured um, older designs for this week, Calico Crosswords. I'll put a link down below if you want to check any of those out. But um, it's always nice to find somebody you may, may, might not have ever heard of before. Um, so... I think that's it for shop news. I'm kind of talking fast. I can tell that, you know, I, I already recorded this video once and now I kind of, I think I rambled a lot more the first time. Um, so let's do giveaway. So last week, the giveaway was Lizzie Kate, if the broom fits, fly it. And with it, you got the matching needle nanny. And the winner for that is Jennifer Neiman. So congratulations, Jennifer. You won the Lizzie Kate giveaway and um, contact me and I'll get that out to you right away. And this week's chart. So a couple videos ago, um, one of my stash or my haul items was the new DMC uh, color card with all the samples of the thread. And I had a color card that I've had for many, many years and used a lot. And that's going to be part of the giveaway. So part of the giveaway is the DMC card with 360 solid colors. So it doesn't have the new, the 35 new colors and it doesn't have variegated or specialty threads. But I use this all the time. And how I used it was, um, let's say I needed a certain color brown, but I didn't have that color. I would pull this out and I'd look for the next closest match and see if I had that color in my stash. The other thing I used it for was when I did my boo chart. Um, I didn't want to use glow in the dark threads. So I got this out and I compared the color um, swatches to the pattern on the cover of the, of the chart and picked what floss colors I wanted to use by doing that. Um, so there's just, and then also if you, um, I don't know if you have like a specialty thread and you want to find the matching DMC thread, you can do that. So lots and lots of uses. So this is in good use condition. You can see that it's still very good condition. So that's part of the giveaway. The other part of the giveaway, I'm going to take it out, is by, it's a chart by Lavender Wings. 
and it's called With Thread in Hand. And this is from 2001. And what it is is a needle roll, needle case, scissor sheath, and fob. So that's what they end up looking like after you make them. And it says, um, with thread in hand, I'm at my best, and this is where my needles rest. And with that comes this really pretty, you won't be able to see it very well in the light probably, but it's this really pretty kind of cameo heart with a lot of detail. It's a Mill Hill treasure. And they show that um, right here on the needle roll. So that you get both this week's giveaway will be the DMC thread um, samples and the needle roll chart. And if you would like to try to win that, um, just make place a comment below and say, I'd like to stitch the needle roll. I'd like to stitch the needle roll. So I think that's it. I'm hoping to um, get some more stitching in. I just really didn't stitch at all last week. And then we got to get ready. I have to got to clean the house and get ready for Father's Day this weekend. And um, we'll see, see how that goes. So I think that's, um, that's about it. Bo didn't bother us very much this time. That's good. Um, happy stitching everybody. And please uh, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And after you subscribe, hit the little bell button and you'll get notified. And please come and check out our Stitch and Move group. We're so excited about it. And if you think you might be interested in the auctions, check out that, that one too. And all the links will be down below. Thanks a lot and have a great weekend, everybody. Bye.